Hello, and welcome back to the Yours in Old Fomoco Iron YouTube channel. My name is Adrian Clements, and before we jump in, I want to remind you when you're done with this video to please check out some of my other videos, numbers 1 through 13, on my channel. Thank you. Today, in video number 14, we're going to investigate the 1968 Mercury Brome Forder hardtop used in the original Hawaii Five O TV show that aired from September 1968 through April 1980. We'll see photos of the car from the show, as well as photos of, information about, and the Deluxe Marty Report for the alleged TV show car that has been owned privately and shown publicly since the mid-1990s. We will also review relevant FOMOCO literature about the 1968 Mercury full-size cars. I will prove that the alleged TV show car is a fake. Let's get started. I would expect that most of you are familiar with the original Hawaii Five O TV show that aired on CBS from September 1968 through April 1980, with a total of 281 episodes. I'll bet you recognize the theme song, too. The show starred Jack Lord as Detective Captain Stephen Steve McGarrett, James MacArthur as Officer Danny Dano Williams, Zulu as Officer Kono Kalakawa, and Cam Fong as Officer Chinho Kelly, all members of a fictional state police task force in Hawaii. The show was based in and around Honolulu on the island of Oahu, Hawaii, and the closing credits state, filmed entirely on location in Hawaii. On August 21st, 1959, just eight years before the show debuted, the island chain of Hawaii had become the USA's 50th state, which is the reason why 5-0 is part of the TV show title. Season one, episode zero of Hawaii 5 was called Cocoon and was a one hour and 37 minute pilot mini movie that aired on Friday, September 20th, 1968. This episode featured a 1967 Mercury Marquis Tudor hardtop with onyx, or black, paint, a vinyl-covered Oxford roof, and a red interior. The 67 Mercury appeared in the opening credits and was driven by McGarrett throughout the episode. This 67 Mercury was replaced in Season 1, Episode 1, called Full Fathom 5, 51 minutes in length, that aired on Thursday, September 26, 1968, with a 1968 Mercury Brome four-door hardtop with onyx paint, a black vinyl-covered Oxford roof, and a black interior. The 67 marquee was still used in the show's opening credits even after the 68 Brome was in the show, and interior shots of the 67 were used from time to time in the show as stock footage for years. The 1968 Mercury Brome four-door hardtop is the subject of this video, and these images of the car are from Season 1, Episode 1, through Season 2, Episode 23. The 1968 Lincoln Mercury data book shows us on page 10C that the Brome lineup included a four-door sedan, body serial code 64 and body code 54J, where the body serial code is the third and fourth digits of the VIN and a four-door hardtop, body serial code 68 and body code 57C. Only one kind of interior was available in the Brome models, and it featured Camelot pattern cloth box pleat cushions with crinkle grain vinyl bolsters in back and twin comfort lounge seats, or split front bench seat, as standard equipment. Please note that even though the Brome models have Park Lane script on the lower rear quarter panels and Brome script on the C-pillar with the standard vinyl-covered Oxford roof, it is not correct to call them a Park Lane Brome. They are just Brome. The 1968 Mercury Color Upholstery Selections book has all of the paint color, vinyl-covered Oxford roof, convertible top, and interior trim information for the 1968 Mercury full-size cars, intermediate cars, such as Montego, and Cougar. It provides us with a paint sample of color code A, Onyx, the black paint on McGarrett's 1968 Mercury Brome Fordor hardtop. It also shows the black 
Camelot pattern cloth used on the seating surfaces of McGarrett's car, which was trim code KA. These screenshots entitled A Tale of McGarrett's Mercury are from the 50homepage.com website and date from the 1990s. On this page, the Illinois-based owner of the alleged 1968 Mercury Brougham Ford or hardtop from Hawaii 50 tells the story of how he came to own the car and subsequently restore it using nine different parts cars. I invite you to pause the video here and read as much of the story as you like. The first and only time that I have seen the alleged TV show car was on Friday, July 17, 2015 at the Ford Product Development Center Employee Truck and Car Show held on Ford Motor Company property in Dearborn, Michigan. This is a fantastic car show that was organized at the time by the incomparable Dave Glickman, a Ford employee. McGarrett's Mercury had been specially invited to the show by Dave and was featured up front and had custom signage created to tell show attendees what they were looking at. Unfortunately, the signage misidentified the car as being a Park Lane Brome instead of the correct Brome. This car is strikingly beautiful with its onyx paint, black vinyl covered Oxford roof, and black Brome interior. Everything on the car is a visual match to the TV show car other than missing the white dual upper body side accent stripes that were A, standard equipment on the Brome, and B, can be seen in the screenshots of the car from the show. I looked the car over carefully, and when examining the doors, found there was a bluish green color paint on the inside of the doors, and red vinyl could be seen underneath black dye on the tops of the door panels in places. At the time, I thought this was pretty normal to have donor parts on the car, what with nine parts cars having been used in the car's resurrection. I noticed that there was no standard, deluxe, or elite Marty report displayed with the car, which struck me as highly unusual for such a prestigious and well-known vehicle. Marty reports are available for any American or Canadian-built Fomoco product for model years 1967 and up, so why wasn't there one on display with this very special 1968 Mercury? Come to think of it, I had never seen a Marty report for this car online either, be it in the article on the 50homepage.com website or otherwise. At one time, I owned six 1967 Fomoco products, three of which were pretty rare, two one-of-ones and a one-of-four, and I always showed them with Marty reports to refute the inevitable naysayers. When I went to read the dash vehicle identification number, or VIN, tab that is visible through the base of the passenger side of the windshield on all 1968 Fomoco passenger cars, it was obscured behind one of the car's show signs. I wanted to see the VIN but didn't want to disturb the car's owner, so I waited until he walked away and then gently moved the show sign to see the dash VIN tab. However, I found that the car's owner had put a piece of cardstock between the inside of the windshield and the dash VIN tab to fully conceal the VIN. So I reached into the car, moved the cardstock, and took this photo of the car's VIN, 8Z68Q535843. The start of this VIN, 8Z68Q, tells us that this car is a 1968 Mercury Park Lane four-door hardtop or Brome four-door hardtop. They both used body serial code 68. Built at the St. Louis Assembly Plant in Hazelwood, Missouri, and produced with a Q code 428 cubic inch, four barrel, 340 horsepower V8 engine. So far, so good. I was a Ford employee at the time, so once the show was over, I returned to my office and ran this VIN of 8Z68Q535843 in Ford's electronic production record database and got quite the surprise. The next week, I ordered this deluxe Marty report for the VIN on the dash VIN tab in order to have documented evidence of the situation at hand. As you can see, VIN 8Z68Q535843 is from a 1968 Mercury Park Lane four-door hardtop that was painted Caribbean blue with an ivory vinyl-covered Oxford roof and an aqua all-vinyl full-width bench seat interior. 
This car was ordered as a stock dealer demonstrator by WG Motors, Inc., located at 513 South 10th Street in Mount Vernon, Illinois. The surprise here is that this car is a Park Lane four-door hardtop and not a Brome four-door hardtop. And the paint is Caribbean blue and not onyx. Also, the Oxford roof is ivory and not black. Finally, the interior is Park Lane Aqua all vinyl full width bench seat and not Brome black cloth and vinyl twin comfort lounge seats. This car was ordered as a demonstrator and sold by a dealership in Southern Illinois, about 4,200 miles or 6,750 kilometers from the show's film location in Honolulu, Hawaii. It is likely not a coincidence that this car and the current owner are both from Illinois. So the bluish green paint that I saw inside the doors is the original Caribbean blue paint that was applied to this entire car when it was built. It is not there because they are donor doors sourced during the restoration. Based on this evidence, it is a certainty that this car is not the 1968 Mercury Brome four-door hardtop from the original Hawaii Five-0 TV show. The 1968 Lincoln Mercury data book shows us on pages 8C and 9C that the Park Lane series had four models, one of which was the Park Lane four-door hardtop, body serial code 68 and body code 57F, the second car from the top on page 8C. The full-width front and rear bench seats with the all-vinyl upholstery can be seen in the photo in the upper left-hand corner of page 9C. These are the pages that actually apply to the alleged Hawaii 5 TV show car, as it is in fact a 1968 Mercury Park Lane four-door hardtop and not a Brome four-door hardtop. The 1968 Mercury Color Upholstery Selections book provides us with a paint sample of color code U, Caribbean blue, and it also shows the aqua Rafino grain vinyl used on the Park Lane full width bench seats with trim code 6K. These are the pages that actually apply to the alleged Hawaii 5 TV show car in its as built condition. We obviously don't yet know the entire story here, and we may never. Based on the dash VIN of 8Z68Q535843 and the corresponding Deluxe Marty report, it is guaranteed that the alleged TV show car is absolutely not the 1968 Mercury Brome four-door hardtop from the Hawaii Five O TV show. If you were the one that had gone to all the trouble of rescuing the actual 68 Brome four-door hardtop from the CBS show lot in Hawaii, wouldn't you have moved heaven and earth and spared no expense to save the car's body and its attached VIN tab so that the restored car was legitimate? I know I would have. In hindsight, the following statement on the 50homepage.com website by the current owner is especially galling. Is this in fact the actual car used in the show? I do not know and cannot confirm with hard facts but circumstances strongly suggest this is the car. Well, now we all know it isn't, and perhaps like me, you feel deceived. Thank you for watching video number 14. I hope you enjoyed it and found it interesting. Please be sure to check out videos number 1 through 13 on my channel for more interesting Fomoco-related content. Please like, comment, and subscribe. There are lots more videos coming, so subscribe and be notified as each new video is released. If you have any questions, or if you have a suggestion for a future video topic, or if you would like to purchase high-resolution JPEG and PDF copies of any of the literature books used as reference material in this video, please feel free to email me at adrian.clements at me.com. Yours in Old Fomoco Iron. Adrian.